Hi, I am Dr. Eli Kohlberg from Unlimited Robotics. In this video, I will talk about another electricity source, which is generator, part one. Before discussing the operation of a generator, we will start with the physical basis. When a current carry inductor moves in a magnetic field, an electromotive force, or EMF in short, is induced. This is the basis of electric generator's work. The right-hand rule, illustrated below, simply shows how a current carrying wire generates a magnetic field. If you point your thumb in the direction of the movement, your middle finger in the direction of the current, as shown, the direction of the magnetic field will be in the direction of the index finger. Pay attention to the fact that there is 90 degrees angle between every two fingers. The left hand rule shows the direction of the force on a current carrying wire when it enters to a magnetic field. As can be seen, if the index finger points in the direction of a magnetic field and the middle finger points in the direction of the current, 90 degrees to the index finger, then the thumb forming an L with your index finger points towards the direction of the force exerted upon that wire. This rule is also called Fleming's left hand rule, after the English electronics pioneer John Ambrose Fleming who came up with it. There exist two types of generators, those who produce direct current or DC, and those who produce alternate current or AC. They both convert mechanical power into electric power. In this video, I will talk about DC generators only. An example of a generator is the dynamo. The dynamo produces DC voltage that is used to operate the flashlight in a bicycle. In this case, the rotation of the bicycle's wheel causes a rotation of the windings, which in turn creates current. This current flows through the flashlight circuit and as a result, it distributes light. The two essential components of a generator are the magnetic field and conductors that move in that magnetic field. Now we will discuss about the forces that act upon the free charges in the winding. The movement of charges that flow in the winding creates a current. Let us assume that the winding rotates clockwise in a constant speed inside the magnetic field as presented in the next figure. The two parts of the winding, Pn and Lm, move at a speed with a mag magnitude v but in opposite directions. The speed vector of the Pn part is pointed downwards and the speed vector of the Lm part is pointed upwards. It stems from the fact that the, regarding Pn part, the current flows out of the screen and in Lm power, the current flows into the screen. When the winding plane is parallel to the magnetic field, both velocity vectors are perpendicular to the magnetic field. A free charge Q that is located in one of these two parts, Lm or Pn, will move with that part of the wire. A force F, we see a small arrow above the letter F, which indicates that F is a vector with magnitude and direction. A force F will be applied on this charge with the magnitude of F equals Q times V times B times sine theta, where theta is the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field. In the case presented in the figure, the velocity direction is perpendicular to the magnetic field direction, so the angle is 90 degrees. Since sine 90 degrees equals 1, we will substitute it in the equation and get F equals Q times V times B times sine theta, which in this case is Q times V times B times sine 90 degrees. And this is Q times V times B times 1, which fin finally gives us Q times V times B. According to the left-hand rule, the magnetic forces will move the charges from L to M and from N to P. The current path will thus be 
L towards M towards N towards P towards Q towards Q tag towards L. The direction of current in the load R will be from the point Q to the point Q tag. This is for now. Thank you for being with me in this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.